have no answers to the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so how many of you think that is an exaggeration? No. So it looks like most of you can relate to it. Uh, personally, I do think it's an ex exaggeration, but there's no denying that internet has become an integral part of our life today. Today, I'm going to talk about something that we all indulge in every day, browsing the internet. And this is going to be a behind the scenes tour, just scratching the surface. So browsing the internet can be divided into three parts. Number one, making a request. Number two, processing the data. And number three, getting back a response. If you think about it, it's very similar to you going to a restaurant and ordering food. What do you do? Order food, the food gets cooked, and the food gets served. Now let's look at each one of these. Making a request. So suppose you had to make a request to someone. What are the three important things? Number one, whom do you make the request to? What is your request? And number three, how do you make the request? Whom do you make the request to? All of us have names. Our mobile phones have phone numbers. Similarly, every device on the internet has a unique identifier called an IP address. Now, when you go to your browser and type www.google.com, like, do you actually, when you're making a phone call to your friend, do you remember all of their phone numbers? No, you rely on the address book on your phone. So the browser also, relies on a global address book on the internet, and this is called a DNS server. Now what does a DNS server do? It stores a website name and an IP address. So when you type google.com, it actually contacts, the browser contacts a DNS server, finds the IP address, and knows whom to make the request to. Now what is the request? So what is your request is whatever you type on the Google search, like suppose you're looking for smiling cats, that becomes your payload, that is what of your request. And how do you make your request? Now when I talk to you, you understand me because we communicate in English, so language is important. Similarly, on the internet, for two devices, to communicate with each other, they have to speak the same language. Obviously, in the communication protocol, in this case, between a web server and, uh, between a web browser and a web server, this communication protocol is, an, is called an HTTP protocol. So now the request has a special name and it's called an HTTP request. So now let's look at processing the data. Let's go back to the restaurant. Where in the restaurant is the food cooked? In the kitchen. In the kitchen. So similarly, the data on the internet is cooked in a place called a data center. Now there are two important things when it comes to processing the data. Number one, a load balancer, and number two, the server. Now, imagine you own a restaurant, and suppose you average two customers every hour. You can probably do with one cook, but imagine you're doing really well, and you have like 50 customers coming in every hour. You probably need three to four cooks, and you probably also need a supervisor who makes sure one cook is not overloaded, and the other cooks are not slacking off. So, this is what is done by the load balancer. The load balancer is the supervisor in the data center to make sure that one server is not overutilized and one server is not underutilized. If you think of companies like Google or Facebook, they get millions of requests every minute. They need 100,000 servers. So this is the processing the data part. The servers actually do the work. They contact databases or run different algorithms and they have Suppose you gave a search in your browser, like smiling cats. They collect the data, they have the response ready for you. Now this response is really huge. It cannot be sent as is on the internet. Now if I had to take my huge chair to my friend's place, I cannot take it in my car, it doesn't fit in. So what do I do? I disassemble it, I put it in my car, I take it to my friend's place, and I assemble it back again. So the same thing happens when it comes to HTTP responses, they are broken down into something called chunks, and then it passes through the internet, and once it reaches the destination which is your browser, it is pieced back together again. Most of the time when we assemble things, we need instructions on how to assemble it. So based on the content type, whether you browse for a video or for audio or you're streaming or then whether you were searching for some text, based on the content type, the browser knows exactly how to stitch back all the chunks and it presents the data to you. Now this three steps, which took me probably more than five minutes to explain to you, happens in less than a second on the internet when you get your response back. And since we get the response back so quickly, it is no doubt more 
टाइम विदाउट द इंटरनेट 